is Joseph Colomer, and this is Conversations in Politics and Political Science. Um, so far we've had about 10 episodes, which are about 1 hour and 10 minutes in total. And this is the coda of our season, I guess you can say, because now we're going to um, respond to the comments that we've received in a sort of little question and answer session. Yeah, we received a lot of comments actually, <clears throat> by email or in the web. Uh, and the first comment was very interesting because it arrived immediately. It was about the trailer, even before the actual conversation was made public, just for the less than one minute uh, so summary of a few moments. It was somebody also uh, already writing, and it, of course it was about style, it was not about the contents, because nobody knew the contents exactly yet. Uh, it was about the style. So let me pull up this one. So this one, um, is, it's from Maddie from Finland. Yeah, and this, I think I'm, I, I should read it because it must be voiced in male voice because it's very mainly comment. <laughs> and he said, uh, Dear colleague, watched your conversation trailer. Two observations. One, it was not a conversation with Ingrid, but a monologue in the presence of Ingrid. Two, does not Ingrid have a family name? He asked. After all, the show is not called Joseph with Ingrid. Uh, and he said, by the way, I've never been accused of feminism in my entire life, but by Nordic standards, you cannot call the other gender by the first name only. Claro. <laughs> claro. He said, claro in, in Spanish, Spanish because it, uh, it means, did I make it clear? Because it presumes that I can speak Spanish. So, and then all the very best, Mati, whatever. And you couldn't resist responding? Yeah, no, I, I can respond. I, I, I can read my own response, actually. was, Dear colleague, I admire your clairvoyance as you have been able to ascertain the, to what degree the conversation approach a dialogue by just watching a trailer of two minutes. So it was very clever. Uh, thank you, too, for informing me of the Nordic <laughs> feminist norms. Here around, I said, we are a little more flexible about using a person's first name or last name or middle name or second last name or nickname or short name or pseudonym. Usually, of course, at the uh, own choice of the person. Selkia, I had to put on that, but Selkia <laughs> means claro in Finnish. So, make it I clear, make, did I make it clear? I uh, hope you will enjoy the series, I said too. So, I'm intrigued by, I was actually so intrigued by the Nordic feminist norms uh -huh. that I googled it. Oh, really? And there's actually quite a literature on it. There's books, there's blogs. So, if anyone is curious about what exactly Maddie from Finland is talking about. So, never, never called the woman by the first name only. That seems to be a norm or something. I, right? I guess. So you, you Although, I, I don't know. I think because you're called Ingrid. I think he thought from the Nordic countries that you were one of them. No, oh, she was one of us. I should defend her or something. I, I guess. I said. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of okay. him defending. Well, honor. another comment is also about our kind of style, but the opposite. This was very, very nice from a very good friend here in Washington, Christina, a woman. So, uh, and she said, uh, "Well, you can read because it's a, a female voice." I have seen only a fragment, but it makes me think of my fair lady. <laughs> if needed, I can explain it to you. Smile. It was smiling, so. Um, well, no, she remembers that we talked, she and I talked about my fair lady many, many years ago, uh, the movie. I mean, uh, as did we. Uh, well, as did we. As we did, exactly. The irony behind And then my response to Christina was, uh, ha ha, wouldn't be lowerly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, you know. That. So, mean so thank you, wonderful, and sang, and I sang, I say Higgins. Did you get it? Mr. Yeah. yeah, Professor Higgins in the of movie. Course. Yeah, okay. And and then she replied, "Was she, she a link?" Yeah, she replied. Uh, yeah, you can read it. OMG, meaning oh my god, of course. It would be so awesome. Must cover nose to achieve nasal tone. Just to remind you that I'm the linguist of the two. Yeah, in person, she, oh, she can imitate the British accent, this kind of thing, you know, the linguists do these kind of things. Uh, and then, uh, that's why we're talking about my fair lady and Professor Higgins. So. Eliza? Eliza? Another friend, Salvador, a very distinguished professor with long careers in Spain, in the United States, and in England, 
Um, I can reveal because it's pertinent to the comment actually that he's uh, 79 years old and uh, he said, Josep, introduce me to Ingrid. Oh She's cuter God. than you. Uh, but he also added, by the way. There's which, a typical expression for Spanish, I think. We which also is over, by the way? So meaning uh, just uh, connected to this comment or something. By the way, a friend's advice. You should speak more slowly, especially in videos and television. I tell you this because I too speak fast, warmly. And a couple of weeks later, he insisted, may, may I have Ingrid's telephone number? And he repeated, she is cuter than you. Yes. No, you may not have my <laughs> telephone number. So we know that you're cuter than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, no, but he, he, he also sent a further message, so almost every week or so. At the very and end, he sent another one? Uh, yeah, this, at the very end, he, when the last episode, uh, he said, uh, congratulations for the interviews or something. Okay. <clears throat> so one more, different comment from uh, Juan. Yeah, you know Juan. Hi, Juan. <laughs> He's a former graduate student of Joseph's, um, now at Princeton. Um, his comment, I watched it, it's very good. It reminds me of some conversations that we had and the things that you told me about five years ago in 2009. Time flies. So I might be repeating myself with the conversations. I had these conversations probably more similar kind of thing before. Sorry. Less codified. Uh, yeah, for sure, of course, and less funny with you. <laughs> and then another guy, Joseph, a former university dean and short-term politician, actually. Uh, he said, I'm following your virtual productivity with which you bombard us. I always learn something. So, kind people in general, so you see. There are a few more comments, uh, several comments on substance, okay? Uh, so, uh, a younger American colleague <laughs> told me about the first episode where I was saying that I introduced game theory in Spanish for political science. And uh, he said that you said... Um, I know, because then you asked me... About the influence of game theory on political science in the U.S. Yeah, and then, uh, precisely, and then he said that it was very interesting my comment, about, my comment about how also in the U.S. game theory arrived late into political science. I think it was kind of self-flagellation <laughs> by American kind of colleague. No pun intended. <laughs> he added another comment saying, I think I know her, have I met her? Yes, he did. She did, but she didn't remember. Uh, he didn't remember. Uh, so and also... <laughs> Several comments about Russia, which surprised me. Yeah, I think sometimes here in Washington, I think some people miss the Cold War and they still think that Russia is so over there all the time. Uh, miss? You mean pine or miss as in they for? Yeah, that they, they, they were they had a great time uh, during the Cold War or something. Well, Washington was the center of the world, and now they had they, they need to now have that reference again. The best kept secret of the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have several comments about Russia. Uh, this from Steve. Uh, do you want to read? I... Greetings, Joseph. I caught your latest video. I didn't realize your interest in this area, so I'm adding a link to my own latest research on the evolution of the Russian political party system under the influence of social conformity. I saw on the video your publication in Russian. I have one too that I can, can't read. You will find the reference in this paper. God. Well, no, nice, nice. So, um, Using it as another platform for <laughs> self-promotion. Everybody does this. We do this as well. Typical academics. Another student. Uh, this inspired me to learn more about Russia. Thank you. Okay. Another grad student. Uh, that's very good. Very interesting professor. The next video could explore to what extent the G7 and the G20 system is good for stability and peace, as I said. Probably it is, he says. And for democratic global governance, probably it is not his opinion. Well, but, you know. <laughs> well, thank you for trying to extend, putting an extension to the episode, but um, students aren't teachers yet. So, <laughs> so the next, uh, and then a secret. Who was this lady hanging at the wall? Yeah, you had this for a few episodes. We had this lady what? hang on the wall when her, us. When her name and story were revealed in the last episode, a number of comments came in. Yeah, uh, the last episode was the, the clue for who this lady was. And uh, you never know. So uh, another very distinguished uh, colleague, let's call him Bernie, <laughs> from California, uh, 
we have met and stayed together for long periods over many years, so talk about everything, but I don't think we had ever talked about movies. But actually, he, in this occasion, he wrote, uh, Joseph, thanks for the Hedy Lamar tribute. Correct. Yes, uh, it was her. It was Hedy Lamar, yes, a uh, great actress. Uh, you know her as well. Like, she was you... called, oh, I learned from you, she was called the most beautiful woman in the world in the 40s. Um, and interestingly, um, one of the greatest engineering inventors, so looks and brains. It looks and brains, exactly. And Bernie said, uh, I'm reading her, I read his uh, message, she certainly deserves this so much. And I will see if I can find one of her classics to watch online. Hope all is well with you. And uh, because I, I listed in, so it was a, a link, so to, to have the clue that she was Heidi Lamar, and there was a, list, a short list of few movies of her and as a kind of personal recommendation. And this uh, colleague, a couple of hours later, actually, he wrote me back again <laughs> saying that uh, uh, her wife, uh, his wife, uh, sorry, and, uh, uh, and, I, and I just watched this horror lady, one of the Hedy Lamar movies, and, and he said, while she's gorgeous and riveting in every scene, I end up agreeing with Bosley Crowther's negative review in the New York Times. So he Googled back to, I don't know how many oh, wow. years before the New York Times archive to read the critic, and he added rather ignominiously, to my opinion, my own favorite movie of Hedy Lamar is the spy comedy she made with Bob Hope. My God! <laughs> no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree. I've never seen, but... No, it's not her best at all. And then, uh, in my opinion, sorry. And then I went, we went on talking about Bob Hope. Uh, whom, whom you adore. I don't, more, I don't yeah. like it very much. And then about Jerry Lewis and Buster Keaton and Peter Sellers. Uh, so why Americans have different tastes about uh, humorous com comedians than uh, Europeans, etc. So you never know. So every subject can become a conversation about anything. And then another professor fan. No doubt, Hedy Lamar was a goddess. And another, another Joseph. I didn't realize she elicited such strong These are a little older people, actually, that men. they knew, yes. Uh, yeah, no, of course, come on. You can see this? Well, I've, I've really been... riveting. <laughs> Well, and for, then another for guy. For the record, my mom also identified her. So. Okay, good. And then another uh, Joseph, actually, is a professional of film studies mm -hmm. in New York. Who I know, he said, "I read this with interest, and that." And he said, "He's an expert. He had a TV program of movies, etc." And he said that Harry Lamar was an inventor new to me. That's the one thing he took from all your knowledge. <laughs> Unbelievable. But nobody so, asked about the other painting that we Oh, yes, uh, the other painting. And some of these others, we had this other painting on, on the back. Ceci the and, Pine Pipe. Uh -huh, Ceci the Pine Pipe. So this is not a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's Magritte's uh, painting. Oh, but yeah. nobody recognized it. Well, nobody said anything. Perhaps it was obvious why it was here. I didn't know. But uh, what do you think? What, what it was here? I thought it, it was it, big. It, I don't think it was obvious. It's just a very. Um, it's very ubiquitous painting, it's very famous, so no yeah. one took the occasion to well, say was something insightful about it. Yeah, but, uh, no, but uh, I like it because for me it's kind of formal model in social sciences when I teach formal models. And I said, uh, so my students at the beginning, so especially uh, so I don't know, very beginners or so, uh, when, if they are unacquainted with formal modeling in math, in economics and politics, and sometimes some of them ask, but is this model real? And uh, so and then my answer is, is this a pipe? <laughs> <laughs> is this a pipe? Of course it is not a pipe, but... There's a picture of a Can pipe. you know a pipe better with the help of this model? Yes, indeed, you can. So the same with formal models uh, in social sciences. Especially if you don't... But I also want to add exactly. a final comment that um, my, the, my own mother said just about our series in general that... Um, Without, you know, the wonderful digital world, the democratization of technology, we wouldn't have had our 15 or 50 minutes of fame. We so, have. <laughs> yes, so another tribute to another wonderful artist, Andy uh -huh. Warhol. Andy Warhol, yes, yeah, thank you, Andy Warhol, for anticipating this fame. Exactly. That we had. Thanks to internet. He, Thanks he to internet. He didn't know internet yeah. at the time. He was clever. So we, we did! did. <laughs>